Hello, my name is Shimon Richmond, and I am the Assistant Inspector General for Investigations in the Office of Inspector General at the FDIC. I'm here today with one of our special agents in charge to speak with you about our office, and importantly, about two scam alerts that our office has recently issued. The FDIC Office of Inspector General, the OIG, provides strong independent oversight of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC. Our workforce totals about 145 employees, primarily auditors, evaluators, and criminal investigators who are located in the OIG's headquarters office in Virginia Square and in the following regional offices, New York, Atlanta, Dallas, Kansas City, Chicago, San Francisco, Mid-Atlantic, and Miami. Our overall mission is to prevent, deter, and detect waste, fraud, abuse, and misconduct in FDIC programs and operations, and promote economy, efficiency, and effectiveness at the agency. We aim to serve the American people as a recognized leader in the Inspector General and federal law enforcement communities. We drive change and make a difference by prompting and encouraging improvements and efficiencies at the FDIC. We help to preserve the integrity of the agency and the banking system, and to protect depositors and financial consumers. The Office of Investigations, OI, is a key driver in our efforts to preserve the integrity of the banking system and protect consumers. OI investigates complex and sophisticated crimes against banks. Perpetrators may be executives, insiders, customers, and other financial professionals. Crimes include bank fraud, money laundering, embezzlement, cybercrime, and currency manipulation, among others. The FDIC OIG has broad jurisdiction to investigate crimes involving FDIC regulated and insured banks and FDIC activities. Today, we want to alert consumers and banks about the scam known as pig butchering. Yes, it's an unpleasant label and an equally unpleasant experience for consumers and banks alike. And the perpetrators in this type of scam may surprise you. This scam is named in reference to the practice of fattening a pig before slaughter. It is a type of confidence and investment fraud in which the victim is gradually lured into making increasing monetary contributions generally in the form of cryptocurrency, to a seemingly sound investment before the scammer disappears with the contributed monies. An FBI report published in March of 2024 indicated that cryptocurrency scams, pig butchering among them, were up 53% and resulted in $4.57 billion in losses. Joining me today is Ryan Corner the special agent in charge of our San Francisco office. Our focus today is on what to know and what to do about these scams. And Ryan will further explain. Thank you, Shimon. I want to focus first on the consumer. Here's a typical scenario. You receive a text message or an email, perhaps part of an exchange that you're having with someone you have befriended on a dating website or romance website, or in many instances, just a random text or email from someone you don't know. The person may start with small talk over a series of texts or even several days. After they have befriended you, they then start touting the benefits of cryptocurrency as a means to make a quick and sure fortune, something that worked for him or her. The perpetrators might contact you randomly by way of text messages, dating apps, social media platforms, and then later switch over to voice over internet protocol chat applications. They will try to develop a meaningful relationship with you, gain your trust, and offer you high yield investment opportunities in the virtual assets such as cryptocurrency. They will tell you to open accounts online, investment websites, and instruct you to deposit money via wire transfer to shell companies or direct transfers on legitimate virtual asset service providers or cryptocurrency exchanges. They will pressure you to invest more money or your relationship with them will end. And here's what eventually happens. Unfortunately, you will most likely be duped and the fraud will end. When you attempt to withdraw your money, websites may demand that you pay additional fees to do so 
or you may be locked out of the account and never hear back from the perpetrator. Perpetrators disappear with all of your funds. Remember consumers, be aware, be skeptical, think twice. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. And don't feel embarrassed if you get caught in one of these schemes. Contact law enforcement immediately. So how do you report this? If you suspect you are a victim of pig butchering, notify your bank immediately. Contact your local police department and file a police report. File a complaint on the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center at www.ic3.gov. In fact, victims should also report crypto fraud at usss.dhs.gov and the Secret Service will refer your email to an appropriate field office for immediate action. It's really important to know what information you should save and provide to law enforcement to better your chances of recovering your money. The FBI suggests you note and save the following to share with law enforcement. Cryptocurrency addresses, amount and cryptocurrency type, dates and times of the transactions, transaction ID or hash, when and how you first encountered the scammer, copies of communications with the scammer, for example, emails, text messages, phone numbers, what domain address, names, website addresses, or applications the scammer instructed you to use, which cryptocurrency exchanges did you send or receive funds from, and the timeline of the scam. But that is just one aspect to be aware of. Let's consider how banks might be involved, perhaps unwittingly, and what harm might come to the bank as these schemes unfold. Here's what banks need to watch for. A customer with no prior interactions with virtual exchanges suddenly exchanges large sums of fiat currency from their bank account for virtual currency or transfers money to virtual asset service providers, VASPs. A customer's account shows frequent and large withdrawals of money or multiple wire transfers to a VASP when in the past there was limited or no activity in the account. A customer appears distressed or anxious to access funds immediately to meet the timeline of a virtual currency investment opportunity or a bank receives calls from a victim requesting the cancellation of a transfer. Our note of caution to the banks? Mitigate your risk. Focus on know your customer requirements. Do the businesses and individuals have websites? Are they registered with the appropriate state and federal compliance office? Immediately freeze accounts and conduct compliance checks. Follow up with account owners who you suspect, suspect to be victims. Justify the origin of the money. Request supporting documentation such as invoices for services provided. Contact recipients of outbound transactions and ensure transfers are for legitimate purposes. And now, back to Shimon to wrap up with a noteworthy example. One stark illustration helps prove the point we are making to the banks. The case of the failure of Heartland Tri-State Bank. Heartland Tri-State Bank, based in rural Kansas, had about $139 million in assets before it failed in the summer of 2023. The bank's failure cost the FDIC's deposit insurance fund an estimated $54 million, prompting the Federal Reserve Board, OIG, to conduct a material loss review of the failure. The review determined that Heartland failed because of alleged fraud by its CEO, who initiated wire transfers totaling about $47.1 million of the bank's funds as part of an apparent pig butchering cryptocurrency scheme. Under the CEO's influence, bank employees circumvented internal controls and processed the transfers. The wire transfers significantly impaired Heartland's capital and liquidity, and the bank became insolvent. Yes, this scheme actually took down the bank, and the former CEO subsequently pleaded guilty to an embezzlement charge for his role in losing approximately $47.1 million of the bank's funds in the scheme. In conclusion, let me just stress the dangers of pig butchering scams to both consumers and the banks. The consequences to the consumer can be severe. Individuals can lose their savings and face financial ruin. 
And the lesson for the banks is that they can be victimized if they don't see red flags and have appropriate sound controls in place. So banks, know the red flags. Understand the threats, both external and internal to your institution. Contact law enforcement. File a suspicious activity report, or SAR, and 314B filings. And refer customers who may be victims of pig butchering scams to their local police department to file a police report and to file a complaint on the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center at www.ic3.gov. As noted earlier, they can also contact crypto fraud at usss.dhs.gov for secret service assistance. Thank you for the opportunity to share our concerns. We want to protect your savings, promote safety and soundness of our nation's banks, and bring unscrupulous individuals to justice. You can help us achieve those goals.